Hey YouTube, how's it going? I wanted to share with you my top three fragrances that I started the year 2021 with versus the top three fragrances that I am ending the year 2021 with. These have been core to my journey. These have been staples, that's a better word, staples in my fragrance journey for 2021. So the very first scent I wore on January 1st, 2021 was Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue Intense. This is a lemon apple musk fragrance my very first fresh and clean scent. Now I did used to wear Cool Water by David Off when I was 13, but that's when I was not into fragrances. So I received this as a Christmas gift in December, 2020. So it's been a little bit more than a year and I'm almost done with the bottle right here. And this to me has such a nostalgic vibe just because even I mean, regardless of when I wear this and I get a lot of compliments, this is a fragrance that I'll throw on even if I'm just running errands because it always brings a smile to my face even if I'm not meeting up with anybody. It's a scent that I really do enjoy, especially when it's warmer outside. And this thing has just never failed for me. I easily get over eight hours with this fragrance, so I feel like it latches onto my skin pretty nicely. Um, but yeah, for a designer scent, I was pretty impressed with how long this stayed on me and how many, like, even after eight hours, I was still receiving compliments from this fragrance and people didn't have to be super close to me. So I was like, oh, okay, wow. This thing, its performance is pretty solid. So Light Blue Intense by Dolce Gabbana to start off, to start us off. Jeez, <laughs> okay. The second fragrance was my signature scent in the beginning of the year and it's Le Nuit de Lombe by YSL. This is still a sexy beast. God, it's a sexy cardamom fragrance. It's a spicy cardamom fragrance. It does dry down a little bit sweet, but to be honest, I think that this fragrance has a freshness to it that can make it worn all year round. It doesn't matter if it's hot outside, it'll, it'll still show out, you know? It's not a fragrance that gets too sweet, in my opinion. I mean, of course, if it's 120 degrees outside, I would recommend against it, but even when it was 85 degrees, I wore it, and I was still pulling a lot of compliments with this scent, so... Le Nuit de Lone was the first fragrance I wore that received a lot of sexual kind of compliments. And I was just like, damn, because I never kind of experienced those kind of reactions before. And I was like, shit, this juice is something special. And even until now, you're still going to see this in a lot of top 10 videos. Even if I hated this scent, I would still put it in those videos because the reactions fantastic when you wear this out in the real world you will get amazing ladies reactions so Le Nuit de Lone was my first signature scent starting the year off and the last one was the scent that I was in my honeymoon phase with that I still love until this day but it's by the fireplace by Maison Margiela I received this I believe on January 3rd January 2nd or 3rd and I was bummed because it didn't come in before the New Year's, but this scent has such a bold kind of uniqueness to it that's likable at the same time. So it opens up smelling like fire, it smells like burning wood, and then it dries down smelling like s'mores, like this vanilla chestnut kind of vibe. So if you're looking for a fragrance that is gonna get you remembered, especially if you live in colder weather or if you're going to like a bonfire at night, you know what I'm saying, and you want somebody wrapped up with you, this is a fantastic scent and people will not get confused with it. There's no way someone's gonna be like, oh, you're wearing that scent, uh, blah, 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 unless maybe it's a dupe of this fragrance because it just has so much character that it's impossible to forget once you've smelled it already. It's also a lovely fragrance to layer with other things. It just takes everything to the next level. So by the fireplace, by Maison Marcella, wraps up the top three, uh, for, yeah, the top three of the beginning of the year. And now we're going to get started on the top three for the end of the year for me. And we're going to start with Citra Wase by Mansara. This is a scent that I have loved since the first time I smelled it. And then there would be a couple months where I wouldn't pull for it. I wouldn't wear it. So I would think it's kind of eh, but then I'd wear it again. And it's just like, oh shit, I remember why I love it so much. So this was never a scent that I disliked or that I felt like it was going like this. It was just that I stopped pulling for it for a little bit 
But once I wore it again, it became addicting. I was like, oh shit, I remember why this fragrance is so good. This thing easily lasts over a day, over a day with five sprays. So it's nothing too crazy. You don't have to go really heavy on the trigger or anything like that, but it smells like walking into Jamba Juice in the opening. It's a very fruity opening. And then it dries down with this lovely woody base. So Sidrat is a unisex fragrance. That's what it's marketed as, but I do know more men seem to gravitate to it. Test it on your skin though. Because, I mean, for me, I definitely get more of the fruitiness. Uh, my sister tried it. She gets more of the woody masculineness, mas masculine vibe with this fragrance. But, yep, it's a drop was a man, Sarah. Perfect signature scent year-round. Even if it's cold outside, this will still show out. So I got to put my love and respect for that fragrance in there. The second one I'm going to pick her actually will go with Ombre Nui because I mentioned that Le Nui de L'Homme was my signature scent in the beginning. This is my signature scent right now. And it's going to be the very last fragrance I wear to wrap up 2021 because I love it so much. It smells like amber and rose. But on top of that, there's a very special somebody that wants to, uh, that has asked me to wear this and she's amazing. So for her, I will, of course, of course. But this scent has gotten me stellar reactions, amazing compliments. And I've said this so many times that even if everybody hated this scent on me, I would still wear it because I love it so much. And if I didn't mention already, I'll put all the names in the description if you wanna just see them all there anyways. But this scent never done me dirty. This is a fragrance that I never had to convince myself to like it. It captivated me from the jump. I didn't have to justify a reason why I liked it. I was just, the first time my nose smelt, where is it? I have the small bottle, here it is. The very first time I did this and I smelt it, I was like, oh shit, I gotta wear it. And then I wore it and the rest is history. It's history. So best believe when this is done, I will be getting the, the even bigger size, maybe the 250 ml, because this is a lifetime thing. This is a fragrance for life, all right? So, Ombre Nui by Dior. And the last scent that will wrap up my 2021. Oh, man, it's tough. I have a lot on this niche side, but I honestly have to, which I'm, I'm torn between two, y'all. I'm torn between two. I'll do one designer and one... Shit, can you tell I'm doing this off cuff right now? You know what? No, I said three and it's going to be Oud Wood by Tom Ford. This fragrance, and I still love these by the way, okay? But when I'm really thinking about towards the end of this year, the fragrances that I was pulling for and really using, I use this so much in November because it was hot in November here. I was wondering when we were gonna get win like winter weather, but regardless of that, this scent is fantastic. I do still think it's a unique fragrance because a lot of people out there aren't wearing fresh woodsy kind of scents. So this is definitely a scent profile that people give me curious compliments about. They're like, oh, that smells different. I really like that. And then the more they're around me and they keep smelling it, they keep telling me like, oh my gosh, that's growing on me. That smells really, really good. Even if I'm passing by somebody, when I give them a hug, when I'm maybe two arms lengths away, this thing is still pushing off really, really nicely. Similar to Light Blue Intense by Dolce Gabbana, this is a fragrance that doesn't, what was I gonna say? That I was surprised with the longevity on my skin because I know that this is a scent that the performance is pretty poor in general, but I would definitely get this thing lasting over eight hours, but before I used to layer it with Elysium and it still smells amazing, but don't be afraid to just go heavy on the trigger with this fragrance. I know it's pricey, but if you really want to get the best, I mean, like get the best kind of smell with it, you know what I mean? Where you can smell it on yourself all day, you have to go over 10 with this scent, okay? Don't just do like a tiny spritz of one and then get mad when you don't smell it after two hours. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, those are the top three I started with, the top three I ended the year with. Thank you so much for all the love and support for this channel. Really excited for 2022. 
and I'm wishing you all the best as well. Appreciate you. Love you. See you in the next video. Bye.